My first time watching The Lord of the Rings. Hey, what's up guys, it's Josh here. Today I wanna to share my experience watching the Lord of the Rings trilogy, a trilogy that I have never seen. They're all about three to three and a half hours, so it is a pretty lengthy investment, but I watched the normal version of The Fellowship of the Rings, the first one, and then I watched the extended versions of Two Towers and Return of the King. I thought I had watched the extended cut of the original movie because I'm like, oh, it's three hours, but I'm like, oh, not this one. So I watched the normal version of the first one, the extended cut of two and three so maybe i should go back and watch the first one i have three movies here so i'm going to do a big pros and a big cons and within those pros and cons i'm going to list which movies the pros apply to and which movies the cons apply to if they apply to a specific movie so anyways let's jump right into it so the pros is all the scenes with the ring are just absolutely money in my opinion and it's probably the the best parts of these movies um these movies have a very light feel almost like a boyish childhood just so light it's hard to describe but when that ring comes out it's like everybody's acting jumps up to a 10 how serious all the scenes jumps up to a 10 the direction and the actors every time the ring was out was just impressive and you could kind of see each actor you know how he would respond to it everybody has a very strong response to the ring and almost everybody is overtaken by its power you know anybody a good person anybody just wants to be taken over by this ring so anytime the ring was in play the scenes were just absolutely 10 out of 10 intense and i loved it another thing i liked was the wizard battles now this is mainly in one and two i had actually never watched any of the harry potter movies and because i like the wizard stuff in this movie i kind of was thinking maybe i should watch the harry potter movies just because there was so little wizard type stuff in this movie and every time there was wizard stuff going on, I actually thought it was really good. The different powers, the different wizards, for some reason I found it pretty interesting. But again, it's only for the first two movies, almost nothing in the third one. Now, I remember talking to one of my friends and we were talking about movies that just have good scenery and take you away to other places. And he said that one of the best movies for him or the movie that comes to mind when I'm saying that is The Lord of the Rings. I gotta agree with him. There is a lot of green screens. I will get to that in the cons, but there is some phenomenal scenery in this i mean just i think the whole movie there's always a big journey there's always these mountaintops i believe they shot in new zealand and it's just absolutely beautiful some great shots epic high up shots it just i can't say enough good stuff about the scenery it does go to some dark kind of grimy spots for a long time but there is some great scenery mixed in as well another thing i liked was the contrast between the first movie and the second movie so the first movie is much more light family or oriented the whole hobbit ton like that's the only real time you get this kind of a vibe it doesn't come back in two or three in my opinion i just really liked how light and how much of a character i felt the first movie had and then the contrast from one to two as two is much more darker you don't actually see golem at all in the first movie you just see little hints of him the second movie is where he's revealed frodo is always the best person to hold the ring but you don't actually see him frustrated or angry at all to the second movie the second movie has a much darker tone which kind of fits along with you know this journey that they're on and how it's getting tougher it's getting darker they're getting closer there's only two people and they have golem with them i just really like the contrast between the first two movies because it does they just complement each other so well the first one being so bright and like a fun adventure and the second one just being a little bit more tough and dark and these are great epic all-day movies especially after i've seen them all and i don't really need to pay attention to each scene just put it on all day kind of watch a few scenes get up and do things because it is so lengthy it is such a unique kind of world they got they got going on here so i could see you know every once in a while just putting it on going and do about your day cleaning some stuff doing some stuff having it on in the background i totally see that and then the last one is that it has an epic cast like i kept seeing so many cameos from so many great actors and movies like you have you have Liv Tyler which is the singer of Aerosmith's daughter you got Mr. Smith from The Matrix in this movie 
You've got, I mean, the bad guy in GoldenEye, James Bond, the Boromir. And the list just goes on. There were so, so many good actors and actresses in this movie, and they totally did their job well. Okay, let's jump into the mixed aspects I had. The mixed was the Hobbits were a little bit too boyish. Now, I actually did like this a little bit, as weird as it sounds. It, there was a little bit of this childhood fun type of vibe that you could kind of catch just a little feeling of, but I do feel like, and again, I watched the extended versions, it was just a little bit overkill. You're seeing so much of them be boys that it's just a little bit too much. And again, I watched the extended cut, so maybe they cut it down because I actually wanted more from the first movie. Second and third kind of felt a little long, but I just like Two Towers so much that I don't mind watching it all. And then another mixed aspect is the gore and the violence. Um, there's times in this movie where it seems like it would feel so much more realistic if you could see more of what's happening, see more of the sword going in. And you know, it feels very tame, like, oh, you know, kids are watching this, we gotta like tame it up, right? And then you go to the third movie and you see tons of more aggression, you see beheadings, you see all sorts of stuff. So there was times where I felt like it was too PG, too safe and like, oh, just like for how epic this battle is, it'd be nice if there was a little bit more you could see with the violence. And then there's times where it was cranked up. So I was kind of mixed on those aspects. Okay, let's jump into the cons that I have with these movies. The cons was I felt Return of the King was way too similar to Two Towers. Now, I was seeing some people gripe about it and apparently in Two Towers, Frodo and Sam are supposed to be farther along in the journey than they are in the movie. And so part of the journey that they go in Two Towers was saved for Return of the King. And I actually don't like that because it feels like too similar of a movie. They both feel dark. They both have this long, journey of Frodo and Sam and lead up to a battle. They're just, in my opinion, they're so, so similar. And I was hoping we'd go back to a much more bright feel like the first one, but the third one, it just, it, to me, it feels just like two towers, but will make everything feel good at the end. And then another con you kind of guess was there's no wizard kind of stuff in the third movie. I absolutely loved the idea of this. And apparently in the original Lord of the Rings, I don't know why Saruman and Sauron are both the enemies here because there's so, there's names are so similar, Sauron and Saruman. But apparently Saruman, which is the wizard, uh, was supposed to take over Sauron, which actually would have been way better because Sauron is just this eye in the sky. And that's great, but it's like, you kind of want like a villain to fight after. And that's what you had with Saruman, the wizard. But then he dies in the beginning of Return of the King. So I wanted more magic kind of stuff in these movies and they really killed it uh, by the time that they're movie came okay the excessive green screens in two and three now i just thought green screens absolutely all the time and it just kind of took away from some of the fantasy because there's times where like oh like you, you see just this great land but it's like so obviously fake or when they're on top of the tree guy and the tree guy's walking around that looks fake there's so 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 many times and again it's not the worst green screen i've ever seen but it's just i feel like i'm constantly seeing green screens in this movie and again that's just because it is older i think these came out like 2001 to 2003. and then another thing i didn't like was changes from the book now i've never read the book but i saw people were complaining about peter jackson changing things in the movie that were not from the book. For every time that they listed something that was actually in the book, I'm like, wow, that would have been better for the story. I see why they're pissed. I'm like, I could see, you know, if that was the original story, the way that they're talking about in the comments, I could totally see the frustration. And I have no idea why you didn't just keep it like the book. I felt like the book, it, the story was a little bit better. Every little tweak that I heard. I really wish there was more time as Sauron as this big hulking beast, basically. The Witch King is a pretty good villain built up in the third movie. I think he's one of the Nazgul, which is from the very first movie. I don't think the Nazgul are barely at all in the second movie. There's a bunch of rings, and then there's one ring that rules all the other rings. So these evil Nazgul guys, they have like basically like a mini ring that it gives you lots of powers, but it's not as good as the main ring that Frodo has. One of the main bad people that have this ring becomes the Witch King. They become He becomes basically like the leader of the army, and he flies on a dragon. He basically can do all this magic. He literally looks at Gandalf. He snaps Gandalf's wand, little staff thing, just by looking at him, so he's super, super powerful. And then he dies in the most easy dumb way and i guess the person who killed him was just she was a good warrior girl but it just seemed like man this guy you know he could just mess with gandalf so easy for you to just take him out in a couple of slices was just it felt anticlimactic i know that's how it happened in the book so i'm actually glad that they kept that character defeating the witch king like that so 
I have no problem with that at all. I'm actually glad they kept it. I just felt like it was really, really underwhelming. Aragorn has the love with like this elf queen kind of girl and Aragorn's gonna die one day but the elf is basically going to be immortal so there's this big conundrum of like you know she's gonna be living forever and he's just gonna die so people don't want them to marry. My big problem with this was that we barely saw any of any of them together. They're together in like the first movie for like maybe 5, 10, 15 minutes and then the whole other time uh, Aragorn is mingling with this other girl and you end up liking the other girl who ends up taking out the Witch King, you end up liking her a lot more with Aragorn because there's so much time with them. It almost feels like an hour, hour and a half, two hours with this girl. By the time that they get together at the end, I just don't feel anything. Gandalf would use magic against other wizards or he would use magic against the Nazgul. You know, that was pretty much it. He has all these powers. He can like stop stuff and do all this crazy stuff, but he never uses them. And then at the end, Gandalf is like flying on like a goose thing or something. He's flying on some big thing but he never uses that the whole time he just goes on a horse the whole time and fights like with pans and punches when it's like but you could fly on something you don't use that you could use magic but you don't use that when people are trying to fight you i just was not feeling that and then the nazgul i wanted the nazgul to be in all three movies they were absolutely epic in the first movie and they pretty much just get rid of them and by the second and the third they do have the one person basically in the third movie but his ending is just so anticlimactic it's like how do you get into it uh there was a few times where it was obviously not the actors like it would be funny like gandalf would be on his horse and then all of a sudden they would cut to this guy just completely hauling ass on a horse with white hair and it's like oh that's obviously not Gandalf or like the hobbits would go into like war and they're just so tiny like they're like little tiny boys but then like when they're acting like they feel like they're normal size you know so not really too much of a nitpick there wasn't too much sustained fighting scenes either now again this is a kind of a product of the time but there wasn't that much sustained you know like he like swords him he turns around and swords him and that's it dun dun dun. it's like sword dun dun, yeah dun dun. and so it's just a bunch of these cut scenes of like a couple slashes it would have been nice to have maybe like a 20 or 30 second scene like walking through and, and seeing them take out multiple guys because the cuts were very they were kind of prevalent but again that's a factor of the time if i were to rate them i would probably rate them all as a series in between a seven and an eight out of 10. They were on par to being maybe an 8 to an 8.5 if Return of the King had been better. And that's what's actually funny is that Return of the King is like supposed to be the end all be all best Lord of the Rings movie. And to me, I would much rather watch number one or number two because I enjoyed that, those much more. But I'll be very interested to see what you guys think down below. If I were to say buy, try or pass, I would say these are worth watching, but I would definitely get the theatrical cut because the theatrical cut is so, so, so long. And if you find yourself wanting more of the scenes then you could go switch over to the longer one but anyways guys this has been my first time viewing all of the lord of the rings movies it has been quite an experience let me know if you've tried them out down below if you have not tried them out i'll be very interested to see i had that stigma of it being this big nerd movie and i just had to get over it this movie does get really really top level intense and i do appreciate that but anyways guys let me know what you think down below we're on the road to 50,000 subscribers and i couldn't do it without any of you guys hope you guys are the best i'm having a great day out here Hopefully I'm having a great day at home. See you all in the next video. Peace.